Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we're doing another one that makes me sweat, makes me nervous, makes me anxious. For today's video, I am going to be doing the if I could only keep one eyeshadow palette from each brand video. So basically, I went through the brands that are both the most popular and the brands that I have the most palettes from, and I pick one, okay? So if you wanna see what ones I picked, then just keep watching. So this was a video that went around about nine or so months ago, sometime last summer, and I believe the whole concept of if I could only keep one from one brand was started from Kelly Gooch, who, by the way, I love her channel. She is so cute. I have been binging her videos this whole quarantine, so that's kind of why I decided to do this video because I saw that one and I was like, I want to do that. I don't know why I'm putting myself through this, but anyways, so I went through my makeup drawers. I picked out the brands that I felt like you guys would be most interested in and that I just had a large amount of palettes in to actually challenge myself. And I picked out the palette that I would keep if I could only have one from each brand. Now, that being said, this is just today. You know, tomorrow, if I were to do this challenge, I probably might have picked a different one. So don't comment, well, what about this one? What about this one? That stresses me out and it makes me second guess my decisions. I kind of went with my gut on most of these because there were some I was toggling between and I was just like, no, no, no. This one was the first one on my mind. I have to take it. So please don't make me second guess my decisions. You know, palette videos like these that ask me to pick or rank or what's my favorite, blah, blah, blah. Those are like asking me to pick my children. So it makes me on edge. <laughs> Anyways, so of course it's makeup. It's not that serious. Let's get into it. No particular order. I'm just picking from the pile that we have in front of me. So we're going to start off with Huda Beauty. I actually have collected quite a lot of the palettes from Huda Beauty. And for me, it was pretty simple. I knew first and foremost that I wanted to choose a big palette. I do love the mini obsessions where it's the nine pans. I mean, some I love more than others, but I wanted one of her big palettes because I love her big palettes. I think she curates some of the best palettes. And ultimately, I decided with the Desert Dusk palette. And I picked up Mercury Retrograde at first, and I was like, no, if I could only pick one, I probably wouldn't use that palette a lot. Though it is gorgeous, and it's one of my favorites. It probably is my favorite. It's not the one that I would use the most. And then I picked up New Nude, and I was like, no, too pink. And then I picked up Desert Dusk, and I was like, this is the one. If I could only have one palette from Huda Beauty, I would choose Desert Dusk. It's a little bit of a warmer palette, which I'm not a big warm gal, but I do actually really like the tones in this palette. I actually could create the look that I'm wearing right now with this palette. I used Tom Ford African Violet for this look, but you could totally recreate this look using this palette. Just play with the oranges, put a pop of purple in your crease. But anyways, I love this palette because I love the different textures, the lid topper formulas that we have on here. I love the purple tones in here, the warm tones. You really get a great variety and overall, I just love the curation of this palette. So of all her palettes, if I could only keep one, it doesn't necessarily mean it's my favorite, but if I could keep one to represent the brand that I love and that I'm going to use all the time, I would have to go with Desert Dusk. I think it is gorgeous. So the next brand that I'm going to talk about is Vizzy Art. And for a second, my mind went straight to the palette that I picked out, but then I started having wandering thoughts. Like, I love Dark Edit. Liaison, you know, is like one of my favorite palettes ever. I'm obsessed with the Paris Edit. But I was like, no, no, no tried and true if I could only keep one palette from Vizzy Art. It has to be the Grande Pro Volume 1. I think for me, Vizzy Art, where they stand out is their matte formula. And I mean, how could I live without this giant palette of mattes? As you can see, I use it. I love it. It has every matte shade that you need and you have the great Vizzy Art formula where it's pigmented, but it's buildable and it's blendable and it's just everything you need in a matte palette. It's not overwhelming. It doesn't deposit too much pigmentation where you put it on your eye and you're like, oh gosh, what do I do with this? No, it's just an easy, usable palette. It works great. It has every color that you need. And when I think of Vizzy Art, not only is this my most used palette, but it is the representation of Vizzy Art that I have in my mind. And they have a lot of other palettes that, yes, they're prettier and I would want to have more than this. But if it comes down to it and I could only keep one, it would have to be this one. All right, so next we're going to go on to Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I mean, I'm not gonna play coy with you. It was either gonna be Soul 
Dolce or Soft Glam. Those are my two favorite palettes at the current moment. Those are the two palettes that I've been talking about recently when I've been talking about palettes. And I've been teetering and tottering. Sultry Soft Glam, Sultry Soft Glam. Today, at this current moment, I'm gonna go with Soft Glam. I just feel like this is such a classic for ABH. I want to keep what is a true representation of the brand if I could only keep one. And I really feel like Soft Glam does that. Right now, I'm more into cool tones. I like Sultry a little better right now. But tried and true, when it comes down to it, in the long run, I want to keep Soft Glam in my possession. I love Soft Glam. It has every color you need. It has some different tones in here. I love the shimmers in here a lot, but there's a great range of mattes. I think the ratio is very fair. I love a little bit more mattes than shimmers. And I mean, I don't need to speak about this palette too much because you guys know it's a great palette. You can see it has every color that you need. You know it works great. I just recently used this in a tutorial as well. It's a really beautiful palette. It is well used and well loved in my collection. And if I had to get rid of all my ABH palettes except one, I think I would have to keep this one. I think. So the next brand that we have is Charlotte Tilbury. And at first I was like, no, I want to keep one of her quads. And then I was like, well, that doesn't really make sense because I do love her big palettes. And in some cases, I find that the quality in her big palettes are actually better and the value is there. I feel like her quads can kind of be hit or miss as well, but her palettes for the most part have struck gold in my opinion, as far as the formulation goes. So I was looking through her palettes and ultimately I decided with the Starry Eyes to Hypnotize palette. Now, when I reviewed this, I really liked it. I said that the quality was wonderful. I said it wasn't original, of course, because she definitely recycles colors in her brand. Even with the new quads that came out, they were recycled from limited edition palettes, in my opinion. They were very similar, if not exactly the same. But I like this because you have a variety of those recycled colors. Even the big Starry Eyes palette before this one, I can't even remember what it was called, but I felt like it was all within kind of the same tone. And then the newest Pillow Talk, the long pillow talk that came out. I love it, but it's all pink, you know? You get a more brown based look, you get a more rose look, you get a more green look, you get a smoky eye look. So if I could only keep one palette, it would be this one from Charlotte Tilbury because you get the best of everything in here. You get a great formula in each of these colors and then I can play with different tones in her formulation because she does have a beautiful unique formulation on the eyes and I really feel like there is a unique look to Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows. So that way I can get this, but I can get different looks. So that is why I chose this palette. So let's move on to Natasha Denona. I was on the floor, I had the palettes open, and I had to go with my gut feeling for this one because I wasn't too sure. I was playing around a little bit. At first, I was like, I wanna keep one of the big 28 Pam palettes because those are her original formula. They are a great kick butt formula. Consistent, beautiful, shiny, blendable, everything that you need, and you get 28 beautiful shades. But my heart wasn't there. I was fighting for those, but I just had to say Natasha Denona Gold Palette. You know, it's a palette that I find myself wanting to reach for because it has all of the neutral tones that I love. And then you also can play around with some green tones, some gold tones. I love this palette. This one for me was definitely following my gut. This is what my heart was telling me to pick because I just love this palette. It does something to me. It holds a special place in my heart, which sounds very dramatic because it's an eyeshadow palette. Like this whole spiel sounds very dramatic, but I love eyeshadow palettes. Okay, this is the one that I have to choose. I just love the dimension that you can get with this palette. I love the neutral looks that you can get with it. I love the pops and different kind of looks you can get with it. Quality in this one is kick butt in every single shade. So Natasha Denona Gold is the one I would keep. And then I was like, but it, Metropolis it has so many different colors. No, no, no. I had to stop myself. This deep down is like my favorite palette from Natasha Denona. So I had to keep that one. Oh my gosh, thank goodness this is not a real life scenario. I don't know what I would do. I also have quite a lot of ColourPop palettes. I talk about ColourPop a lot on my channel. I love ColourPop. I think they have awesome palettes. They're one of the few affordable brands where I'm like, their shadows are good. This one was hard because I have a lot of ColourPop palettes and I like a lot of ColourPop palettes for different reasons. But I think I'm choosing this one because it's spring. So I want springy tones in my collection. So I have to talk about the Sweet Talk palette. And you know, I also was staring at Bare Necessities, the Jaded palette, the Lilac palette. There was a lot that I was thinking about, but ultimately this one was the first ColourPop palette that I truly loved. I felt like you got a lot of different formulas in here. I loved the tones in here. And it is a very pink based, peachy based palette, which is not my favorite everyday wearable kind of colors. But for the most part, this is a true representation of ColourPop for me. It's one of my favorites. Not going as far 
were to say, oh, this is my favorite ColourPop palette, it might be. I haven't thought about what my favorite ColourPop palette is, but it's one of my favorites. And also the packaging as well is what speaks to me. You know, packaging is a reason that sometimes I do buy makeup. I know it sounds silly, but it's part of the experience of applying makeup for me is enjoying the packaging that it comes in as well. I love the packaging of it. I just feel like it's so detailed. This collection from ColourPop last year that had came out, it was my favorite collection from ColourPop because I just thought everything was so well thought out. And I just love this palette. So this is the one that I would keep. Now again, ask me tomorrow, I probably pick a different one, but today this is what I'm feeling. So of course I have to talk about Pat McGrath and this one is not gonna be a surprise to you the second I've thought of what palettes I would pick. I knew I was gonna pick this one from Pat McGrath. Didn't teeter, didn't totter just picked this one out. This of course is the Bronze Seduction palette. This is still my favorite palette in the line, though Midnight Sun has been climbing up. I have to admit it has, <laughs> but I really do love this palette. I feel like it's a true representation of Pat McGrath. You have her four Blitz Astro shades that I'm in love with. You can plum it up. You have some brown and chocolates, some bronze, some taupes, just a lot of variety in this palette. So I feel like I'm very comfortable with this palette. I can go with a lot of different tones. I can play it up. I can play it down. For me, this really speaks to my Pat McGrath soul. If I want to create a Pat McGrath look, this is what I can go for and still feel confident in the type of look that I can get, whether it be just to go to work or to sit at home or a rave I don't know whether I want a super shiny glittery look or a neutral everyday wearable look I can grab for this palette and it has a great variation in tones and colors so had to pick this one up probably not a surprise for you if you have followed my Pat McGrath journey all right so the last brand that I have to talk about is Too Faced and I don't have a ton of Too Faced palettes nor do I really purchase too much or everything from the brand anymore but I have accumulated a collection of their older traditional more popular palette and I do feel strongly about the palette that I chose because I love it so much so I wanted to talk about Too Faced and this is the Too Faced chocolate gold palette they've come out with a lot of good palettes I'm not gonna lie they've also come out with a lot of not good palettes but this one it's a good palette now this is a majority shimmer palette I would more so call these metallics or foiled so maybe that'll tell you why I love this but you do have the mattes that you kind of need and then you can pop whatever metallic shade you want on top I find the formula in here to be really beautiful the shimmers are very foiled and most importantly it smells delicious. So Too Faced, in my opinion, they hit it out of the ballpark with this eyeshadow palette. They have a lot of other palettes that I liked, but when I think of Too Faced and the one palette that I truly love, it has to be this one, and I just, I love it. I love shiny things. So I had to pick this one out. Oh my gosh, wait, did I just completely forget Tom Ford? I'm gonna pick one out right now on camera as we speak. Now, I do have a rankings video coming for Tom Ford. I haven't started ranking them. I don't know what my number one is. So I'm gonna talk about the first palette that comes to my mind, which is Daydream. Hold on, let me grab it. This does not mean this will be number one in my Tom Ford video, but at the current moment, it's the one that's on my mind the most because I just love it. I love purples. And so this is Daydream. I have some Tom Ford experts here. So can you please tell me? This is sold out everywhere. Are they discontinuing it? Are they gonna restock it? I need to know because I love this quad. All purple quad, you have a lot of different tones and every time I wear this, I just freaking love my eyes. He has a lot of other great quads in his line, but every time I wear this, my heart sings. Purple eyes do something to me and I just love the quality of these purples here. Because none of them are matte, I find them very easy to work with because a lot of times it's the matte purples where you run into trouble. This, everything just applies so seamless, so effortless. Your eyelids just look like the purple gods puked on you, but it still looks amazing. And these are the type of purple tones that I love, not too like brown purple or black purple or berry purple. These are like lavender based purples, which I love. So this may or may not be number one. I'm not sure yet. I went with my gut feeling on this one, so I have to talk about that. All right, those are the eyeshadows that I would pick if I could only pick one from each brand. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love doing these palette challenges or even just makeup challenges in general. So if there are any fun ones that you guys know of, please comment down below. I'm looking to do them because I have time to be creative with my videos and film whatever the heck I want. So that is all I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel yet, I hope you guys take the time to do so. I have been posting every day. My goal is to post every day except for Sundays. So six days a week. Make sure you subscribe to get notified of my videos every morning. So have a good day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Continue to wash your hands and stay in your house. Bye guys. Have a good one.